Hi friends, Elizabeth Turnage here with our Monday meditation, a gospel-centered encouragement for you to get your week going in the right direction. So today I am talking about the question of, is it okay to count our losses? I mean, we know that it's good to count our blessings. I do a Friday thankful post every Friday where I just take the opportunity and invite you all to join me um, in looking back over the week and seeing what are the wonders that God has done, small and large. So um, that's, oops, I'm so sorry. Uh, I bumped my table. Um, so that's definitely a good idea. But uh, what about counting our losses? And today I really want to talk about lament and grief. And I planned this post, if you don't know already, I do a um, Monday meditation and then Tuesday I send out a written form of this. So um, this is me more talking to you and if you have comments or questions or um, like today, I'd be curious to know like where are you as you watch this video? What's your emotion? Because when I planned this content back in, hey James, when I planned this content back in the beginning of February, I was I was grieving. My mother had died in early or mid January of COVID, and I knew several people whose parents or in laws had died of COVID. And then I knew a lot of people who were just, you know, sad, grieving, tired, maybe had hoped that 2021 was going to just be completely different than 2020, and yet it wasn't. So today we're talking about lament and grief and is it okay to count our losses and i'm sharing from this book which i i can't remember if it's backwards some some uh, social media it is but this is the waiting room which is a devotional i wrote for people in health crisis uh, but it has a lot of application to all sorts of things and when i wrote this particular meditation called count your losses I started with Psalm 56, 8, and it says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. And I had read that Psalm, and I was thinking about this. This book covers a period of time in 2017 and 2018 when our youngest son was diagnosed with the brain tumor and had between August of 2017 and um, March of 2018 had four brain surgeries. And so uh, I missed a lot of things that I had been planning to do, kind of like all of us, you know, so if you want to write in the comments, like some of the things that you missed in 2020 that you had pl planned to do, uh, that's where I was when I was writing this meditation. Like I missed, um, my husband and I missed our daughter's white coat ceremony for PT school. She was starting PT school and it's a big ceremony. We weren't able to go. Our, our son was recovering from surgery. We had to cancel our trip for our 35th anniversary. A lot of us canceled trips last year. <laughs> Give me a big thumbs down if you had to cancel a trip or a gathering that you looked forward to. I missed my uncle's funeral. Um, and my dad was also in the late stages of cancer and I was his primary caregiver, but I was not able to be there for him because I was, you know, with our son. So there were, those were some of the losses that, that I listed when I began thinking about this. And then the question is, is it okay to do that? Is it okay to take stock of our sorrows? And if you look at the Psalms, they would say, the psalmist would say emphatically, yes. Because of the 150 Psalms, somewhere, it depends on you know, which, which scholar you read, but somewhere between 65 and 67 of them are Psalms of lament. So Asaph, for example, is one of the psalmists. If you look at those little titles at the beginning of the psalms, you'll begin to notice his name coming up a lot. He cried out, this is what he said to God. You don't let me sleep. I am too distressed even to pray. I think of the good old days long since ended 
when my nights were filled with joyful songs. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Psalm 77, 4 and 5 and uh, verse 7. And then David, the man after God's own heart, moaned, My eyes are swollen with weeping, waiting for my God to help me. Their insults have broken my heart, and I am in despair. If only one person would show some pity, if only one would turn and comfort me. Psalm 69, 3 and 21. And here is what's so amazing is as each one of these people in the Lament Psalms cries out to God, we see their heart shift. And so where they begin by naming their sorrows, God's unfailing love meets them and the lamenter begins to assert his hope in God. So after his outcry, Asaph's focus shifts to God's power. And he says, oh God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. Psalm 77, 13 and 14. David's heart also changes. He says, for the Lord hears the cries of the needy. He does not despise his imprisoned people. Praise him, O heaven and earth, the seas and all that move in them. Psalm 69, 33 and 34. So as we count our tears, we meet a compassionate God who's counting them right alongside us. And this same God who counts our tears sent his son, Jesus, to weep human tears on this earth for us and with us. And this same God promises us that one day Jesus will return and restore all broken things and God will wipe our tears away. So should we count our losses? Is it okay to count our losses? I think it is. I think the Bible says clearly, yes. Let me let me pray for us. Tear tracking God, help us to count our losses and to discover your amazing love even as we do. Help us to weep tears over our own sin as well as the pain we encounter in a fallen world. In Jesus' compassionate name we pray, amen. So here are some lament psalms if you want to try this. And I would suggest read it out loud, especially if you're in a place of grief or if you just want to see how this shift works. Uh, here are three, Psalm 56, Psalm 69, Psalm 77. And then if, you know, if you're in a place of grief or maybe you know somebody who is, and I hope that you would share this. You can send it in a message or you can share it on Facebook, but make a list of the losses that you've suffered during this season. This would be, this would be good for anybody to do who's lived through 2020 and ask God to reveal his compassion to you in the midst of those losses. So thanks for joining me. I do want to tell you tomorrow is the six month anniversary of this book being out in the world, which is for people in any kind of crisis. And so both of these books are gonna be on sale at Amazon for $7.99 tomorrow, not two for, they're each $7.99, but that's a great price. And so if you want to get one for yourself or to stock up, I have a lot of people who just buy them and have them on hand to give to people. So that's coming tomorrow. And I will be back next week with more gospel-centered encouragement. So thanks for joining me today, and I will see you again next week.